Hey guys, uh, we're on lesson 1.4, Logical Statements. In this lesson, you're going to be able to define and write your own logical statements and also describe and apply the segment addition postulate. What is a postulate? So a postulate is a statement that is accepted as true without there needing to be any proof. Okay. For example, two points determine a line. It's, it's true. Any two points can make up a line, right? Or a segment. Um, so again, a postulate is simply a statement that does not need to be proven, okay? And that's that. Um, when you're explaining or proving a concept, like you're writing a proof, which we will begin doing very soon, um, when you're explaining or proving a concept, you can cite a postulate and you'll see how to do that as a reason in your chain of logic. And that's what a proof is. It's basically a chain of logic. And um, it, it's, it's interesting. And it's actually pretty fun to do if you have a sense of how to use postulates. Okay. Um, so the segment addition postulate. We know what a segment is. It is a um, portion of a line that has a starting point and an ending point, okay, or two endpoints if you want to call it that. Um, and the segment addition postulate states that if point B falls between points A and C, then if we take the length of AB and add it to the length of BC, we'll have all of AC. Very simple, okay? We take this segment, the length of that, add it to this, it'll make up the whole thing. So it's like saying you take this piece and you add this piece, you get the whole piece, okay? So that's the segment addition postulate, all right? So like it says here, and you're going to write that in your notes, if we take the length of AB, and I know that this means length because there's no notation over it, if you take the length of AB, add it to the length of BC, it will equal the length of AC, okay? On to logical statements. So, an if-then statement is a conditional statement, and this is a very vocabulary-heavy section. Um, the hypothesis is the statement following if, and the conclusion is the statement following then. For example, if two segments have the same measure, that's the hypothesis, then they are congruent. So this is a conditional statement, okay? So if this is true, then that's true, okay? That's the conclusion that's drawn. And that's, like I said, called a conditional statement. Um, then there's also a converse, and every single conditional statement has a converse statement, okay? And the converse exchanges the hypotenuse a hypotenuse, excuse me, the hypothesis and conclusion. So in this case, right, so your hypothesis was here and your conclusion was there and it went from hypothesis to conclusion here. It's the opposite, okay? So your conclusion is here and your hypothesis is here. So if two segments are congruent, then they have the same measure. Okay, so we started off with um, we started off with the conclusion, right? Two segments are congruent, then they have the same measure. That's called the converse. So the converse of any conditional statement is going to be right that conditional statement backwards. Okay, when a conditional statement, make sure you're getting this down, write it all down. When a conditional statement and its converse are both true, you can combine the statements into a single biconditional statement. And what that looks like is, for example, right, a biconditional statement contains the phrase if and only if, or the symbol, you'll see this symbol sometimes, it's an arrow, it's a little, little tiny line with arrows on both ends. Um, any valid definition can be written as a biconditional statement. All right, any, any one of them. For the example above, the conditional statement and its converse are both true. Yes, they are, right? Because if two segments are congruent, then they have the same measure. That's true. If two segments have the same measure, then they are congruent. That's true. 
All right. So, for example, the conditional statement and its converse are both true, so they can both be written as two segments are congruent if and only if they have the same measure. And that is also true. Okay, so and this essentially is the definition of segment congruence. It, it's that's what segment congruence is. Okay, so that's the end of that. You are going to move on. Not a lot of notes today. You're going to go ahead and watch the supplemental videos, and you're going to do the try it out. Okay. Remember to leave any comments in or questions in the comment section. Take care. Have a great evening.